Hello and welcome to the final video in Warhammer Week on this channel. So today's video is going to be a model and build review of the Dark Imperium box set. So to start we're going to look at the Primaris Space Marine Force. Across the board the Primaris Space Marines I'd say were the easy ones to build out of the two forces and went together in about half the time that it took to get to put together the death card. However, this is also reflected in the models are less intricate, less detailing, but uh, more flexible gameplay wise, as in they can be any chapter. So, the first model we're going to take a close up look of is the Primaris Captain in the Gravis Power Armor. The Gravis Armor is like a pseudo Terminator armor, but it grants him an extra point of toughness. Uh, still reduces his movement speed, but doesn't improve his um, save to 2+. plus. So essentially it makes him stronger versus... Um, makes him stronger versus small arms fire, but less, vers uh, less strong against weapons with a low AP value, for example. A bolt rifle reduces him to his 4 plus save, whether it's the invulnerable or his armor save, whereas the uh, Terminator armor takes an AP of at least 2 to get to that. Just one last rotation. He's a solid character that boosts your force. Uh, as well as having a ranged presence, as well as a choice between two close combat weapons required for situation. Then we have the Primaris Ancient, which was another very easy to put together build. He still needs some tidying up with mold lines, etc. Uh, the banner is reliefed, so you can use it as whichever faction you want but it doesn't uh, and you don't need to worry about painting freehand details in you just need to use the transfer sheets or to freehand in command badges then we have the first of the two Primaris Lieutenants this is the one with the master crafted auto bolt rifle and a bolt pistol. The bolt pistols for the primary Marines are slimmer versus regular Marines, but also have a uh, but have the same profile. Whereas the auto bolt rifle, and it's the master crafted one from the index book, does two damage and fires two shots, so it's better than a bolt rifle. And I like the fact that his helmet is clipped to his leg, even though I wish there was the option to helmet him up. Then we have the second of the Lieutenants, and this one is based more on close combat with a power sword and bolt pistol. Uh, he functions very similar to the other Lieutenant, where he's a force multiplier, and you use him to support areas where your captain can't be. Both of the left hand models were incredibly easy to put together as well. Basically, if you know how to put together push fit space rings, you know how to put together these guys. Then we'll look at the Intercessor Squad A. This is their sergeant. The Intercessor Squad A is a complete. Uh, are full of unique poses with no repeating poses throughout and as you'll notice here the Primaris sergeants have a little bit of tactical gear on their armour allowing them to like get orders etc on the field which isn't something you see on regular space rings These are the additional poses of Squad A, and we'll just run through it.
Intercessor Squad B is here, where the only unique pose they have is their sergeant, who again has his helmet clipped to his hip, but I wish there was the option to have him helmeted. And this was say just a optional attachment point, which I'm sure is something you'll see in the multi-part plastic kit. Uh, Intercessor Squad B is made using multiples of the same pose, but you can change the directions of their head. So for example, this one, the leftmost one is looking to his right, whereas the rightmost one is looking to his left, allowing for a slight variation. However, I will personally mix the two poses together so you get more variation across the board. The Hellblaster squad ne is up next with their huge plasma rifles that are incredibly deadly and again they have a unique sergeant with the balding head and um, air mask. Again these still need a little bit of touching up but on the whole they're incredibly easy to put together. Hellblasters work like Intercessor Squad B, where you had two, you had duplicate bodies, and you just change the direction of the heads when these focus up, as you can see here. And then finally, we've got my personal favourites of the Primaris Force, which is the Inceptors, the new Jump Marines, which aren't Assault Marines. Instead, they work more like the Seraphim of the Sisters of Battle, where they uh, float round units and shoot them as opposed to engage them in close combat. Though if you do decide to charge them they can get a mortal wound off on a roll of a six. The in Inceptors, believe it or not, other than the Sergeant, aren't unique poses. Instead, on the right arm, as you put it together, there's a little star slot here, so you can rotate the arm to some degree to get varying poses, and the head can be moved left or right as well. So that wraps up the primary space reinforce. Uh, as I said earlier, I feel like these went together very easily. They took about an hour to put together, not including the time I'm going to have to spend cleaning them up. So we'll move on to the Death Guard next, and then finally a size comparison. And now we move on to the Death Guard um, models. So, as I said earlier in the Primaris Marine section, I personally found these more difficult to put together and they definitely took more time and that's not including time that's still going to need to be spent to clean them up. If you can clean up Death Guard models that is. The, um, that's largely down to a certain number of models which were a lot more difficult and time consuming to put together. But first we'll start with the Lord of Contagion. The Lord of Contagion, I think, is an incredible model, and it's definitely one of my, if not the favourite model I have in this kit, where it definitely shows how it was once Cataphracty Terminator armour, but how it's been warped and twisted and corrupted over time, and captures the essence of the Death Guard very well, with the sensors, the smoke billowing from them, and the guts dripping out of them. This model, despite its complexity, was actually... Um, Deceptively easy to put together, with there only being about five parts to his entire body, with two legs, a front part of his body, the back part of his body, and the arms, which all slot together very nicely. The nurgling is a separate piece you put underneath, but and that's three parts in itself. So that's it. So that really stands a testament to Games Workshop and how e how they've definitely got an ease of modelling to mind for this set. And we'll just do one last pan. 
Then we move on to the Death Guard's Lieutenant models, which they've got here, which function differently from the primary Space Marine ones. First we've got the Noxious Blightbringer, which has this god-awful bell that is going to be the death of me, I swear. Not that it was hard to put together, but as I glued it into place, I saw the link there bend, so I might need to strengthen that with a plastic rod somehow. But um, another Nurgling is in this, so they've definitely kept the old aesthetic of keeping Nurglings being silly on the models, which I like, because it shows they haven't gone completely grimdark. Again, though, this model it was one of the deceptively easy ones put together, but I will say put this arm on before the back pat. The back pat is one part, including the Nurgling, and it can be difficult to get this arm into place because of the peg afterwards. The Noxious Blightbringer is a force multiplier where um, he allows your models to advance quicker and impose a leadership penalty on the opponent ones while still having a plasma pistol to dish out ranged hey, uh, hurt. Then we have the Malignant Playcaster and I really do not like this model. <laughs> It was an absolute pain to put together, being incredibly fiddly and in multiple parts that just didn't seem to fit together. I spent a good half an hour just building this one individual guy. And even then there's still gaps and seams I'm going to have to fill in with green stuff. And I also, I don't know if we'll be able to see, but I also don't like his face. There's just something about it that looks very baby-like. I do like the billowing plague smoke, however, and that would have to be my favourite part about this model. But it was all in all just an incredibly fiddly part to put together, which really went against the whole ease of build that this entire kit, well, the entire box has had so far. Uh, in the game, though, he's a psyker, and psychers you can now select your powers, which makes him incredibly useful. And as well as on top of whenever a psychic power successfully goes off, he can deal out a mortal wound. So Smite can be incredibly deadly with this model. I'll just do one last bloated pan of him. There we go. Uh, next we'll move on to is the Plague Marines. There are seven Plague Marines in this box. Uh, each of them is a unique pose, barring two of them, but the Two, they use it very cleverly where they change the arms and chest piece so the models look completely different. The armour you see is definitely used to be Mark III from the Greaves and just how it's set out. But these were middle of the ground to put together. They weren't the easiest part of the kit but they also weren't the hardest. They just well, took a while to find the individual pieces, but they look great and are definitely an improvement on the old Death Guard, in my opinion. The champion of this unit really stands out and is an example of a hooded head that I like as opposed to the Malignant Playcaster, where it's just a rotting, decaying face underneath as opposed to a bulbous, essentially baby face. There we go. Uh, then we have different, and we also have a nice variation in the poses while still keeping them all tied together in a way that the squad looks like. It could be one squad where you'd have the guys in motion towards the front, etc. All in all, I would say this kit has a very good sense of motion to it, with even just the swaying sensors blowing in the breeze, etc. As well as some nice chaos gribbly bits like little tentacles growing out of armour. And if this is the new aesthetic they're going for the, with the Death Guard, I would really look forward to the individual multi part release boxes for them. Then we're on to these two models, which, believe it or not, are actually from the same base body. You can't really see it from the front as they have different weapons 
and head options to show the differences but if you look to the back of them you start to see the similarities where they're laid out the same but still because of the different weapon options and different heads you can put them into a squad and you wouldn't even re notice it was a nice little reference to see seven plague marines there as well being as uh, Nurgle's holy number is seven of course the next set of models we'll move on to is the pox walkers which were definitely the easiest part of the kit to put together but did take the longest because there's 20 of them all of them apart from this one I'm showing you right now were two-part models with the heads or the weapons being separate that you just glued together. Very similar in a way to the old Dark Vengeance cultists were. Um, of the 20, there's only 10 unique poses, and after that there's duplicates, which I'm a little bit disappointed about, just due to the fact of they've been so clever to avoid duplicates with everything else, even if it was just to position heads. Um, potentially something that could have been done was have the heads be completely interchangeable amongst the squad so then you'd be able to really get a bit of variety in and some difference down but um, these would have to be a very close second to my favourite selection of models they're just so well Nurgle with bits growing out of them, arms being in place they shouldn't be maggots eating parts of them they just look incredibly cool as well as having interesting rules to the tabletop as they are pretty much zombies which get bonuses for being in squads higher than 10 um, in close combat providing a plus one to hit as well as every time they kill someone in close combat you add a model to the unit so it might be worth picking up a box of zombies and converting them to for use for that purpose if by some miracle they manage to make it into close combat without losing any wounds. Then finally we're on to the big beastie, the Foated Blight Drone. And I really don't know what to think about this. On one part I think it's incredibly cool um, and fits well into the Nurgle aesthetic and design similar to the plague drones I think they were by Forge World but at, the same, uh, but at the same time there were also bits of the instructions which were slightly unclear on it like the arm weapons, the slots don't exactly line up with um, the, sorry, the pegs and the slots don't always line up or when you put them on you don't realise that by gluing them exactly as it shows you in the instruction book has the guns pointing down but it does look cool and it does add the vehicle that needs to be in, well, every starter set so far. But yes, the Plague Marines, though they were, well, the Plague Force, whilst they were the fiddlier and a bit more awkward to put together, I would say this selection model is the selection I prefer in the in the box just because they're so unique and full of character and you can tell what they are just from looking at them. Um, with the Lord of Contagion and the Pox Walkers being my favourite, uh, even if I wish they could have done with a bit more variety amongst the Pox Walkers. So now we move on to the next section, which is a height comparison between all the models in the kit. Well, not all the models, but with old Space Marines, new Space Marines, etc. And here we have a lineup of, well, the usual subjects. X with a standard space marine in the middle and a Tartarus pattern Terminator space marine for in uh standing between the captain and left ten sorry and the sergeant. Both of these models are from the Betrayal of Calf box set. As you'll see, the immediate comparison of course is amongst the ye olde space marine and the Primaris, as well as the Pox Walker. Poxwalkers now seem to be the size of, well, the previous human size models in the game, and they're roughly the same height as an old Space Marine. Whereas the Primaris Marine stands approximately a head taller than the Space Marine, but on roughly equal terms to the Terminator. 
Whereas the Captain and Gravis armor dwarfs both of them. Where if we remove the Poxwalker and place him next to the Plague Marine, sorry, the yeah, the Plague Marine next to Sam Space Marine, you will see they're actually slightly taller, not by a lot, but enough to say um, scale creep is a thing. And then, of course, the Lord of Contagion towers over the space train. What I find interesting, however, is if you put the Lord of Contagion versus the Gravis armor, where the Gravis armor makes it makes the space marine captain on roughly equal terms to the Cataphracty, despite the incredible bulk difference. And again, the lieutenant, sorry, the sergeant, I keep saying that, it's because of the head. Um, again, the sergeant is roughly the same size of them. And if we put the Tartarus pattern Terminator armor, I didn't have any cataphracty to hand, I'm afraid. You'll see that the Terminator armor of the Lord of Contagion is makes him slightly taller than the Tartarus one. Which, of course, isn't an issue when you consider that, well, he is um, from the Nurgle faction, so he is bulkier, he's bloated, he's grown. However, something I find is if you put the Primaris Sergeant and the Plague Marine side by side, there's not a huge height difference, nowhere near as much as the Space Marine and the and the Plague Marine. I'll put them next to each other just so you can see. So it seems to me that over time the heights are going to get slightly bigger. Yes, the um, standard size of Space Marines and Chaos Space Marines etc. won't grow exponentially to put them on the same size as Primaris, but they are getting bigger. So, but that's it for Warhammer Week. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Please share these videos around. Um, if you like them, of course. And please sh subscribe if you'd like to see more content. We'll be heading back to a weekly schedule as of this now. But this has been That Welsh Nerd. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one.